Welcome back everybody. So the question for today is, should we be taking our snakes out in public or not? And there's a lot of opinions left and right of that one, so that's what we're going to talk about today when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. So you guys may have noticed the sign on my door. This is the one that goes down to my reptile room. Thought you may get a kick out of that. Okay guys, so this is gonna be a fun one. And I'm gonna do my best to keep it fairly upbeat, but there's some pretty cold hard truths about taking our animals out into public that we definitely need to discuss and everybody needs to think about before we, um, just go strutting ourselves down to PetSmart with our 14 foot reticulated python. Um, now this is Roxy here. She is an adult female ball python. She's really sweet. Um, definitely not a dangerous bone in this girl's body. And something like this, most people will be perfectly fine taking them out. You know, if you want to run around on a nice warm day, have your snake with you. Um, you know, anybody that's outside of arm's reach is perfectly safe and even anybody that gets close. Ball pythons aren't known for being um, really snippy as a general rule. As long as she's got a nice warm spot to sit, she's happy. Now, <clears throat> there's an entirely different discussion to be had if we're talking about boas, some carpet pythons, uh, Burmese, retics, um, you know, rock pythons, anacondas, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of considerations that we need to think about before we go taking any of these out into public. And I will tell you pretty much um, without any hesitation that if you're not an expert level keeper, then you do not need to be taking any constrictor, any snake, you know, over five, six feet out into public with you. Um, and expert keeper, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ways you can interpret that. But it all really boils down to one really basic fact, and that's just a risk assessment. Now, in the Army, in the business world, in anything that we do, we perform a risk assessment. And, uh, you know, you're looking at, you know, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen here? And if you're talking about maybe a, a trip out to the uh, local pet store or something with your 12 foot constrictor, the worst thing that can happen is it get away from you. It gets, gets a hold of somebody and wraps them up. I mean, you can't really think of anything worse that's gonna happen in that setting. So what we do is you've not only got to know how to mitigate the worst case scenario if it does happen, you've got to know how to take steps to prevent that from happening and make sure that you're doing everything in a safe manner. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Now, again, like I said, somebody as small and benign as your little ball python right here, it's an entirely different story. And I've had both of my retics and my Burmese out to reptile shows, interacting with other people. Um, I've taken them out so that, you know, proprietors of pet shops and so forth can see them. <clears throat> and I've had them out a, a pretty fair bit. Now, a couple questions to ask yourself before taking any of your large snakes out into public um, that you really need to answer honestly is, um, one, would you feel comfortable walking into pretty much anybody's place and managing their 14, 16, 18 foot constrictor. Uh, anybody that's been doing this for any length of time, you know, outside of 
you know, the typical precautions that you're going to take dealing with an unfamiliar animal is going to say, well, yeah, you know, I've dealt with enough of them. I'm comfortable enough with them to know, you know, what to look for and, and how to act with them and so forth. So, um, if you can, if you can sit back right now and imagine yourself walking in to a friend's house and he says, Hey man, why don't you take that 16 foot retake out of the cage and you'd be hesitant and you really wouldn't want to do it then you probably don't have the skill level required to be trusted to have your big animal out amongst people who know absolutely nothing about these animals. Um, I mean, it's nothing personal. It's, it's just, you know, we're not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about the people around us. And it's something that needs to be said. Now, another thing too, when we're talking about worst case scenario, and what's the worst case scenario if you've got a snake out in public? Um, that is that it sneaks away from you, it gets a hold of somebody and wraps them. So that brings us to the other question that you need to ask yourself. Have you ever been bitten and wrapped by a retic or a constrictor of any kind? Um, have you ever had to help anybody else out of that situation that's happened to them? You know, have you come up on somebody that's had a snake on them and you've had to manage it for them? Um, you know, and you can look at that a couple ways. One, do you want your first experience with something like that happening, to be around a bunch of people that don't know what to do, you know, a bunch of people that you don't know, that this may be their first exposure to, to a large constrictors, period, and it just happens to end up being a bad one? Probably not. So there's that too. I mean, you can't put yourself in a position where the worst case scenario, no matter how unlikely, is still possible. And you don't know how to manage it because I guarantee you, you can watch all the videos that you want to, but until you've got a 16 foot animal digging almost half inch teeth, six rows at a time into your bones and into your tendons and wrapping you up, you don't know how to deal with it. Uh, that is something that is really an eye opener the first time it happens. So. Yeah, take it for what it's worth. You can have all the experience in the world, but until you've actually experienced it, um, you really don't know how to mitigate it. Now, that being said, having experienced that and understanding how unpleasant that is and knowing what it's like to worry about somebody else who um, I'm pulling a snake off of, um, it's really good motivation to make sure that you're avoiding those, um, those occurrences as much as humanly possible. So anytime you've got your snake out, first of all, you need to make sure that you've got at least one other person with you who's familiar with the animal, who is equally as experienced, who knows what to do, and can help you monitor that animal the whole time you're out. Now, I had, had my 12-foot retic and my 12-foot berm both out to the reptile show with me here last weekend. And that was challenging because you know, you're in a situation where you've got people roaming all over the place. Now my animals were fine. Um, my retic, she is just curious George all over the place. And she never showed any signs of being stressed out. Um, she did really well that day. And you know, after a little bit of tug and war, tug of war chasing her around and, and letting her run a little bit, um, she kind of got tired, draped over my shoulders and fell asleep and we just kind of roamed around the rest of the day. And I came home with a sore back. But um, one of the things that you make sure that you're doing, you know, you and the other person that you're with, is if you've got that snake out in a public area, somebody has to have positive control of that snake's head at all times. Meaning, you know, up until this point, this snake's head was in front of me. I seen it. You know, and I could hold her in such a way that if she decided to shoot off towards somebody, I can restrain her. Now her head's behind me. Now, if you're going to have, you know, this person out or this snake out in public, you've got to have somebody else there that can be the eyes in the back of your head. So, you know, I'm going to continue to keep my hands up on the first one third of her body. And whoever is, you know, whoever's with me is going to be watching their head. And they're going to be watching for signs that the snake's getting agitated. They're going to look for signs that the snake's kind of honing in on something. Um, whoever's helping you has to have the ability to read the snakes. So, um, again, 
That, I mean, and this just goes back to the rule too, where you, you never handle a large constrictor by yourself. You've always got somebody with you. It's doubly important if there's anybody else around, you definitely need to have somebody else there with you. Um, like I said, to be the eyes in the back of your head and kind of help manage that animal. Now, when I've got my snakes out in public with me, um, there's a couple things that I do. And one of which is I try and stay as far away from people as I can. And I let people that are interested come to me. I don't just walk up to people with this animal on me. Um, like I said, you know, if you're at a reptile show, most people are, they're just there to see them. I mean, that's, that's what they're there for. So you know they're interested right off the bat. But there's some people there that don't have any experience with them, don't know anything about them, and are, you know, for one reason or another, afraid of snakes. So if you've got something, you know, small snake, big snake, doesn't matter. Don't chase people around like you're on a schoolyard, you know. You've got it there. If somebody wants to see it, they'll approach you. They'll let you know in one way, shape, or form. Don't just go running around to people saying, hey, look at my snake. It doesn't work that way. In a lot of different contexts, you just don't want to do that. So that's the first point to make. Yeah, make sure that you've got a nice wide berth between you and anybody else around you. And you need to be, between yourself and your partner that you're out there with, you need to be in complete control of this area all the way around you. You need to make sure that people aren't coming into it uninvited, unannounced. Don't just let people just walk up and start reaching out because oddly enough, I mean, people will do that. They'll walk right up and start reaching out towards the snake's face like, oh, look at the snake. You know, they assume it's friendly because it's around your neck, but they don't know enough about snakes to know that, yeah, you typically don't want to reach right out for their face because there's a good chance it's going to get you. So you've got to make sure that you're maintaining 100% control of your area. You know, your, your whole space all the way around you, you and your partner that you're out there with doesn't let anybody in that space Nobody just wanders in unannounced. Everybody's head needs to be on a swivel, making sure that you've got 100% situational awareness and you've got a safe environment for you and your animal and nobody's gonna come into that space where they can have an accident happen. That's the first step. Now, the second step is making sure that you've always got positive control of the top one third of that snake's body. Now, if I've got my reed tick out someplace and say, for instance, she's around my neck like this, this is one of the things that I may do. You know, this particular situation, her head's right here, but I've got, you know, about a foot from her head, my hand's right here. So if she was to bring her head around and see something that caught her attention and she decided to strike at something, she's not going to go any further than, you know, maybe just past my elbow because I've got her held right here. You know, she's not gonna be able to stretch out half of her body length or anything to get to go after anybody. So you make sure that you maintain control of this. Now, if I'm out and somebody's like, can I pet it, can I touch it? I'm going to turn the snake's head around away from that person so that it's right here and, you know, let them reach up and feel it right here, you know. That way, even if her head comes around and she wants to see what's going on, she's got my arm as a block right here. I don't have to worry about her getting scared, waking up or something like that and getting a hold of this person's hand while they're, you know, interacting with the snake. So it's really important that you maintain positive control of that top one third of their body. And I need to mention too, you're not grabbing them. You're not holding them. I mean, there's still a right and a wrong way to handle snakes. And <clears throat> if you're grabbing them by the head, you, you may as well just put them in the box, take them home because you're already um, doing something that will make just about any snake defensive. And once you do that, game over, take them home, learn how to handle your snake, essentially. Um, you know, you've still got to be able to handle them naturally so that they stay relaxed. You've just got to be keyed up that much more so that you're maintaining control and making sure that they're not going to be able to get away, like I said, and go half their body length out on the off chance something was going to happen. Um, and another thing, too, if, um, you know, there'll be times, especially with, this is something that I do pretty frequently with my, um, my Burmese. 
because he's heavier than a retic. You know, he's 40, 45 pound snake and he's 12 foot long. And people really don't understand exactly how heavy these animals are until they've had them in their hands. So on more than one occasion, I've let somebody, you know, hold them, handle them and so forth. And there's a couple things that you really need to be mindful of when you do that. Again, maintaining control of the top one third of that snake is of the utmost importance. The very first thing I do, and it scares some people away, but it is what it is, is I explain to them that this is what we need to do if this snake bites you. You know, because everybody's like, oh, does it bite? Well, it's a snake. You know, you do the wrong thing at the wrong time and there's a chance you can get bit. So the very first thing I do is I say, look, if this animal gets a hold of you for any reason, I know it's going to hurt. I know it's going to suck, but I'm going to need you to either take right behind the snake's head and hold him in place. Don't pull off. Don't try and pull away from him because he's got recurved fish hook teeth in there and we need to wait for him to release. So if he does get a hold of you, you maintain control of that head and then start at the tail and start unraveling him and we'll get him off of you and we'll get you taken care of. But it's really important that you don't just jerk the snake off of there and you'll end up taking stitches because of it. So in the course of talking them through everything that they can expect to happen through this so that I know that they know what's going on, before they ever touch it, I say, so we went over the bite. This is what we do in, the, in those circumstances. Now, the way you're gonna take this animal off of me is I'm gonna maintain control of the head and you're gonna go around and you're gonna grab the tail and start unwinding it. Cause typically, you know, they're, they're wrapped around your waist and whatnot or if they're draped over your shoulder um, you know like this case right here her tail is right around my neck like that and I've got her head down here so what I'm gonna tell somebody is okay what I want you to do is walk around the back side of me over here and grab her right up here behind my neck and then just start to support her body and take her and then just kind of turn around so that he's peeling the bottom half and two-thirds of the snake off of me well I've still got the top half right here so that way by the time they've got the weight of the entire animal in their hands you know they'll be standing next to me holding the body up and I've still got the head just like this so in the event that anything was to go wrong you know I'm still far enough away and the snake's still blocked enough to where they're not going to be able to get to them. If the snake freaks out and gets anybody, they're going to bite me. I'm used to it. <laughs> if you can get used to it. Um, but it's not going to freak me out. So you need to be, you know, doubly cautious when you've got anybody else in that space there handling that animal with you. Um, and quite frankly, you need to be able to, you know, run interference if anything bad happens. Um, it's your animal. It's your responsibility. So, you know, if something happens and the snake slips and gets a little freaked out or something, and, you know, when they do that, sometimes they'll latch on. Um, you know, maybe they'll react to it, but you need to make sure that you're still maintaining control and keeping that snake's head away from the other person. And now the particular animal and that animal's personality, of course, weighs a lot into your decision whether you let anybody else interact with them or not. Um, you've got to make sure that they're well socialized, make sure that they're secure animals, that they're not naturally defensive. Um, you know, any, any of your animals, anybody that knows them, um, you know which ones you could trust around people and which ones you can't for the most part. So again, you're making sure that, you know, the animal's secure. You'll make sure that the person knows, hey, you need to support their body weight. You can't just have them you know, draped over your hand like that. You got to make sure you're supporting them, make sure that the snake still feels secure the same way it would be if you was handling them. But, um, you know, if you do everything right, you can help people interact with these animals and do it safely. And it doesn't stress the animal out, doesn't stress the people out, and nobody's got to get stitches. And it's a wonderful experience. Um, helps to share these animals with people in a way that they may not otherwise be able to be exposed to them with. Now, you know, once, once the person's had their fill and they start to get tired, you know, still maintaining control of the top one third of the snake, 
I'll just tell them, you know, here, go ahead and rotate around, drape the snake back over me, and you're maintaining, you're making sure that their head's, you know, far enough away from them to where, you know, if anything was to happen, it happens to you instead of happening to them. And, you know, you get done, you have a great experience with them. And these are the kind of positive experiences that we need to help the public have. Um, you know, especially in this time where there's so many new reptile bans and regulations and everything that's on the table. The people that aren't familiar with the animals, that don't know anything about it, that are afraid of them, are the ones that are going to instantly say, you know what, I vote to ban them. Nobody needs to have them. And nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, these animals are awesome. You can have an awesome experience with them. Uh, absolutely love keeping all of my guys. And on my off weeks, I am downstairs with them constantly. And you can see here during the week, I'm always up here talking about them, making videos with them, interacting with them. They're just great. But not everybody feels that way. And a lot of the reason why a lot of people don't feel that way is because they don't know anything about them. They think they're dangerous man-eaters. And <clears throat> those of us who love these animals really need to be making every, you know, every reasonable effort that we can to help educate folks about them. And the best way of educating people about things is hands-on. Now, that being said, you know, the caveat in there is that you've got to help people have good experiences with these animals. And the only way you can ensure that they're having a good experience with the animal is if you know what you're doing and you're doing it right and you're taking every precaution first and foremost to keep the people around you safe, to make sure that you're not stressing out your animal and to make sure, like I said, everybody has a good experience and they get to interact with one of these awesome apex predators that you've only seen on National Geographic. So there's, that's the big, a big portion of why I think it's important that, you know, we take our animals out into public when the opportunity presents itself. Um, going back to right time and right place though, uh, there's a lot to be said for that as well. Say for instance, you've got a local pet store that you go to, you know, you're talking with the proprietors or, you know, cashiers or whatever, and it's a place where everybody's got their dogs and their birds and their monkeys and, you know, and anything that they've got as a pet, they bring in there. Um, you know, if you're talking with them and they're like, you know, I'd really like to see it, why don't you bring it down someday? Or, you know, if you're offering, say, hey, you know, if you're interested, I'd be more than happy to bring it down one day. Uh, the first thing is make sure that you're getting permission first from the people that are going to be there so that they know what to expect and you're not just all of a sudden showing up with some monster reptile and, you know, everybody step back like, wow, where'd that come from? Um, you know, make sure that you're bringing it into an environment that's prepared for it. Um, and again, you know, the same thing with when you're at the reptile shows and you've got these animals out. Um, you know, you've still got to have somebody with you that knows what they're doing. You've still got to be able to maintain your area, keep everybody out of it that doesn't, um, that isn't aware of what they're walking into. Um, especially in pet stores because, you know, people are coming into the door and everything. You can't be standing right there next to the door with this big snake because, you know, people are looking at their phones or looking around. All of a sudden they look up and they've got this constrictor in their face and they're like, ah, you know, and you scare the hell out of them that way. And we don't want to do that. So, you know, walk in, make sure the area is clear, find a nice corner of the, you know, nice corner of the shop or whatever where nobody's going to be passing through and, make sure you maintain control of your surroundings the whole time you know let everybody see it let them interact with it take them home it's a good day um, so one thing that you'll hear is you know it's not good to take your snakes out into public because it stresses them out unnecessarily well there's some truth to that but it all depends on the animal if you've got a naturally defensive animal who doesn't get handled a whole lot who shows signs of being stressed around handling, probably not the best animal to take out into public and you probably want to work on socializing him some more before you try exposing him to anybody else. I've been really fortunate with all of my animals. Every single time I've had one of them out, they've never showed any signs of being stressed. As a matter of fact, you know, especially like with my female retic, you know, she gets out and explores and looks around a little bit and then when she's tired of trying to get away from me, she just 
curls up and like falls asleep on me pretty much and um you know just like she did at the last show uh same thing with all my animals because i don't put them in situations where they've got people reaching for their face and they're always you know up at them and putting them in situations where they might get uncomfortable i maintain control of my area and make sure that the snake's safe it's supported make sure you're doing proper handling techniques and so forth and you keep your snake happy and they'll keep everybody else around you happy so you know inherently is it bad on the snake does it stress them out no not if it's a well socialized snake you're fine um, now that being said there's one other quick cautionary point that I need to make and that is particularly regarding um, reptile laws and they vary from state to state county to county to city to city um, you need to know exactly what the reptile laws are in the areas that you're planning on um, having your animals out at uh, you could very well be completely legal in one city one county um, to have those and then go into a city somewhere and they've got an ordinance against them uh, now you're in trouble because you're not supposed to have that animal there so definitely something to keep in mind um, the laws about reptiles that don't make sense we need to work on changing them and you don't change them by breaking them so make sure that you're aware of what the laws are and tying into that too is um and my apologies to anybody out there named karen but they're out there you know um anytime you've got your animal out in public you run the risk of somebody i want to talk to the manager well, one way you can mitigate that is by okaying everything with the manager ahead of time so that when they do talk to the manager, they're like, oh, I know, he's down here for educational purposes and, and it's all ready. But <clears throat> that still doesn't stop them from calling the cops. You know, it is what it is. We don't live in a society where everybody's accepting of everything. Um, and we've got to take that into consideration, too. Every time we step out the door with our animals, um, you stand the risk of getting yourself hemmed up. I mean, it's just the nature of the society that we live in. You know, you can be out at a pet store and everybody's perfectly happy and you're showing the animal to somebody and somebody walks in with a little dog on a leash or something. They call the cops and they say, man, this guy had a monster snake in there and he almost ate my dog and bit my kid. And I guarantee you that when the police show up, they're not going to be on your side. Um, they're going to probably come in guns drawn because uh, most of the cops that I work with aren't familiar with snakes either, and they tell me I'm crazy for having them. Um, so yeah, they get a call like that. They're going to they're going to be on edge, and you're not going to start that conversation on their side probably 90% of the time. Uh, so it's really important that you take all of those things into consideration too. Make sure that if you're taking your animals out anywhere, you first got permission to be there with them. People are okay with it. You've got an actual legitimate purpose for being there with them. You know, you're, you're showing somebody, you're, you know, just making yourself available for people to see them. And you definitely don't want to be just chasing people around because you think it's funny watching them squeal. Because I guarantee you, they don't think it's funny. And um, it's, it's a really good way to get a, bad, get a bad rap for our animals and yourself. So I'm sure there's a lot more things that can be said. Um, I'm sure everybody's going to have their own thoughts, their own opinions on this. Um, and it's definitely something that we need to talk about as a reptile community. And we need to talk about it with the people that aren't part of the reptile community. Because quite frankly, <clears throat> it's not the reptile community that's making the laws about how we keep our animals and what animals we're allowed to have. It's everybody else. So we've got two choices. We can either stay in our own little secret sect and fight from the shadows. Or we can do what I encourage the lawmakers to do, and that's try and educate people about them. Um, it, it's the only way that reptile keepers as a community are really going to be able to secure our rights to keep these animals is through educating people about them. You know, you need to be able to show them that, you know, this 10, 12, 14 foot snake is not a killer, it's not a man eater. Um, you know, it's been bred into captivity, and, you know, for anybody that knows what they're doing, they're safe to handle and they're safe to be around. Um, 
really, really important discussions that we need to be having. So there's a lot more that can be said about this, and I encourage everybody, jump down in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. If there's any concerns that I missed, please let me know. Um, that's the whole point. I mean, the only way that we're going to uh, educate folks about our animals is through exposure, you know? And we need to make sure that we're doing it not only safely, but, you know, not compromising the health and well-being of our animals at the same time. So, um, if you think this is a good topic to talk about, hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe, get notified. The more subscribers I got, the more people we can get information out to, and the more opportunity I've got to get information from the community to make me a better keeper too. So it's a win-win. Um, you guys have an outstanding day, and I will talk to you next time on Intrepid Exotics. See you soon.